name is Madison and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to encourage you all to start your college prep now. Um, I'm going to be discussing why you should start your college prep now and how to get started with that as well as some of my experiences with my own college prep for undergrad and both graduate school applications. Um, it's never too early to start and I highly suggest, I know it's January, but I highly, highly suggest you start now. So without further ado, let's just get started. Before we get started on today's video, I want to give a huge shout out to Prep Expert and thank you so much for partnering with me on today's video. Prep Expert is an online website that has both one-on-one -on -one tutoring as well as courses that can help you master the PSAT, the SAT, and the ACT. They have fast-paced four-week courses all the way out to eight-week courses to help you increase your score as well as the one-on-one -on -one tutoring if you prefer that to a course as well. Um, I will have everything linked down down below if you are interested in checking any of the resources out. Like I said, highly suggest you take advantage of these resources if you are interested in taking the ACT, SAT, or the PSAT for scholarships this year. Not only that, but they have one-on-one -on -one tutoring that can help you with the AP test subject tests, as well as the GRE, the GMAT, the GED, and so much more. Like I said, I will have everything linked down below, and I highly encourage you to go check them out. Without further ado, let's just get started. A little bit about me, you know, I'm sorry if you've heard this spiel a million times, but I do like to talk about sort of where I'm coming from with this. I'm a current senior studying aerospace engineering with a minor in computer science. Um, I just finished my PhD applications. I applied to 10 schools for a combination of applied aerodynamics and aircraft control theory for my PhD. So I have been through this whole college application thing twice. Um, and I feel like by now I've sort of mastered it and I've gotten it down. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to talk to you all about why I think you should start your college prep now and how to do so. So first things first, like I just mentioned, um, ACT prep, SAT prep, standardized prep takes a long time. This is not something you can master overnight. And if you are looking to increase your standardized test score, now is the time to do it. Um, <clears throat> now, I know a lot of schools these days are not requiring standardized test scores. That being said, they can be a huge help to your application if you do well on them. Um, like I said, boosting your score can not only help you get into the school, but it is a huge, huge, huge contributing factor to scholarships in particular. Um, I have not talked about this much, but I got a 34 on the ACT, which by no means is perfect, but it is a relatively high percentile, um, and I'm on a full ride scholarship right now. I firmly believe my full ride is due heavily in part to my ACT score. Um, there are three scholarships I have that play into my Full ride and then some. Um, so the two that I got through my university that contribute to my full ride were strictly merit-based. So those were strictly based on my ACT score or SAT score. I did better on the ACT though. Um, strictly based on my ACT score as well as my GPA in high school. And then the other big scholarship that I have that completes that full ride scholarship and gives me a little bit extra for housing and books um, <clears throat> was based on a few things and one of them was standardized test scores. That being said, investing a little bit of money and a little bit of time into your standardized test scores, as unfortunate as it is, can go a very, very long way. Now, I just took the GRE a few times this past summer, which is essentially the grad school ACT. It sucks, I know it sucks, and it honestly is sort of a bummer in some ways that the standardized test that every single person has to take is gonna be such a defining feature in your college application and your scholarship success. Um, it's kind of frustrating, but that's how the world works right now, and there's not much you can do about that. Um, if you're not in a financial position to pay for ACT resources, there are a ton of other resources, free courses, test prep out there to help you master this, nail it down. Like I said, you don't need a perfect score. I did not get a perfect score, but every point helps and every little bit can help contribute to your success with getting into school and getting more scholarships. 
Now, now is the time to do that. If you are a junior in high school, even a sophomore in high school, do this right now. Um, or maybe you're a junior in college hoping to apply to grad school soon. The ACT and standardized test prep honestly kind of sucks and the last thing you want to be doing is spending either your summer doing this or be spending um, your fall semester doing this on top of probably a very busy senior year. Maybe you're in sports, maybe you're in AP classes, um, whatever it might be and doing college applications at the same time. If you can check some of these boxes off before other things start piling up, do it. 110% do it right now. Um, I took the ACT twice during my junior year, was pretty content with my score, eventually thought, you know what, I think I can do better. I ended up taking it once again at the end of my junior year, which made a huge, huge, huge difference. And I'm so glad I did because that was the time I did the best. And I had just so much peace of mind going into my college applications, knowing there was one less thing I had to worry about and one less thing I had to do. So start that now if you can. Going off of that, now is the time to make your resume. Sit down tonight or this afternoon, whatever time it is, sit down, bust out a resume, give yourself a 30 minute timer. It does not need to be perfect. Just make a resume. And the reason I'm saying this is making a resume will help you identify the holes you have in your resume. It is January. You have nine plus months until your applications are due. Maybe even a whole year, depending on what schools you're applying to, if you're a junior right now. If you're a sophomore, even better. You have two years. Make a resume, find the holes in it, and take the next six, nine, 12 months, whatever it is, until your first few applications to fill in those holes. Maybe you don't have enough job experience. Maybe you don't have enough leadership experience. Whatever it is, volunteering, skills, engineering experience, leadership, whatever it is, make a resume, find one online you like, do your best to make yours look like theirs, of course, be honest with it. But like I said, this is gonna help you find the holes in your resume and it's not too late to start filling them in. However, September of 2022, tw I guess 2023, September 2023, it is too late to start filling them in. When you make your resume and you put a date time period, timeline on there from when you fulfilled that role. Let's say you're the president of your robotics club. You do not want to say you started that a month before. Let's say you joined the dance team. You don't want to say you joined it a month before your college applications are due. You want to show admissions that this has been something you've been involved in for a substantial period of time so it doesn't look like a last minute, I did this as a resume booster. Um, I'll be honest, I did that. I I mean, everybody does. Everybody does a lot of things to boost their resume and that's okay. But if you can make it less apparent and extend the amount of time you spend doing something, please, please, please do it. School just started. Now is the time to go join a new club, join a band, learn to play a new instrument, um, start volunteering somewhere. Like I said, that time period matters. And if you can show admissions that you've been dedicated to something, for a substantial amount of time, or a relatively long amount of time, that is great. Like I said, go make a resume, do it now, find the holes, and work right now to start filling them in. If you are curious on some things or need some ideas on how to start boosting your resume, there are tons of ways to do it. Um, some of the things I would highly suggest if you are a high schooler looking to do this for college, or maybe you are an early college student, maybe a first year or a sophomore working to build your resume for internships. Certifications and skills are huge. If you can get SolidWorks certified, that will take you so, so, so far. If you can do some more courses and whatnot, um, there are a ton of online courses in Python, JavaScript, a ton of coding languages. You don't have to be a computer science major or anything. Coding skills and CAD skills are important and will take you very, very far. So two easy ways to just start giving yourself a little bit more experience if you want a few more skills on your resume and a little bit more to talk about. Number three is to start drafting essays. Now I know that sounds ridiculous, but I promise 
a lot of these schools application essays are going to be pretty darn similar. Now if you can enter September, October college application season with a few drafted essays under your belt, you can pick and pull from different essays to make new ones. I call it Frankensteining. Um, for PhD applications you write what is called a personal statement. Now every school does it a little bit differently, but for most schools it's a combination of your previous work experience, your future goals, and then why you think you're a good fit for that school based on the research experience you've had. Over the summer I wrote four personal statements, they're about two pages long each, so I had eight pages of personal statements and I ended up Frankensteining and pulling from all four of them to make my one final personal statement. You can do such a similar thing with college essays. Um, some schools might have you talk about an invention you would come up with if you were given a thousand dollars. A lot of common app essays are relatively similar every year. There's always some, um, especially if you are in an underrepresented field, you're probably going to get a question probably for an underrepresentation or a minority scholarship to ask you to talk about an experience where you were discriminated against. As a female in STEM, I have a lot of these and it it's helpful. I have written a ton of these stories, but to just have a few stories in the back of my head already sort of drafted halfway on paper saves you a ton of time when you're stressed, you're busy, your brain is tired. If you already have a few sentences, a few little starters you can pull from to get your thoughts jogging again, I promise you, you will save yourself so much time. Um, now I've talked about College Essay Guide before. I will also have my link down below um, and my code is Madison for 10% off if you're interested. But College Essay Guide is a resource I have used a ton. Um, that can help you get started on your supplemental essays, the Common App essay, um, the UC school essays, whatever you're applying for, there are a ton of resources on there, as well as a ton of free resources, not just paid, free resources if you are interested. Um, again, please get this started now. I promise you, your senior year summer, you do not wanna be doing, or the summer between your junior and senior year, you wanna be having fun, having a fun job. I don't think you wanna be doing essays and ACT prep, start this stuff now. I promise you will not regret it. Number four is to make your college list and start touring schools. Now I just talked about comment or now I just talked about college essay guide, but they also have um, an entire course on how to pick schools, how to start drafting your college essay list. Um, I know it's really, really daunting when you see there are thousands of universities just in the US alone. How do you pick the schools that are best for you? How do you narrow down over a thousand schools to maybe seven, eight, nine, ten that you're actually going to apply to? This is not easy. Um, and if you can start narrowing that down and start touring those, I promise you it will again take a lot of stress off your shoulders and just really help you to start realize what you like and what you're looking for in a school. Um, again I will have the course on picking a college school list down below if you're interested but for a little bit of reference I applied to seven schools for my undergrad. During my junior year spring break, so spring of 2018, I went and took a big road trip with my family all around the east coast um, and we toured five schools. We toured High Point University, Kentucky, Virginia Tech, North Carolina State, um, a few other schools around there. At the end of the five schools that we toured, I decided I only wanted to apply to two. Now, I say start your college list right now and start touring right now. Not everybody has the financial um, or is in a financial position to tour a lot of schools, but if you are, I highly recommend it. If I would have taken the time to apply to all five of the schools, that would have been another few hundred dollars of application fees and a lot of time and energy wasted applying to schools I didn't want to end up at in the, in the first place. Um, so touring before you start your application can be really, really important just to help you um, again, save yourself some time, start to figure out where you truly can see yourself going. And after you go to even one, two or three schools, you will start to realize and have a gut feeling within a few minutes of being there, whether or not you like or dislike a school. Um, ironically enough, there weren't very many schools I felt like I loved. Um, I knew pretty quickly whether I hated a school or not. Now, hate is a strong word. I just 
got a good feeling I wasn't supposed to be there pretty, pretty quickly. Um, I left after I toured CU and had a weird like pit in my stomach. It wasn't like a yes or no. Ultimately, I ended up here. I'm so glad I'm, I'm here. I've toured CU a few times just with my school, with my parents, um, things like that. And every single time I was just more and more sure this is where I meant, was meant to be. Um, granted, I'm just a few hours from home, so I by no means spent a lot of money touring. Now, like I said, I know touring is expensive, um, but for example, CU Aerospace, we have a pre-filmed aerospace tour online if you want to go check that out. Um, if you cannot make it in person, there's just tons of options like that, especially since the pandemic, on how um, you can make touring more affordable and more accessible. So, a little caveat to that, and I sound like a hypocrite. Um, I applied to 10 schools for my PhD and of all 10 of those I think I've only ever seen two of them. Um, so yes I did spend a lot of time and money applying to schools I've never actually toured. Now if you've heard me talk about PhD applications before um, typically if you get in you'll be flown out there they put you in a hotel for a few nights and you get to tour the school with the professors you'd potentially be working with. Um, all expenses paid for which is huge so um, yes I did take a lot of time and it, it is a financial investment to apply to 10 PhD programs but um, if I get into them I will have the opportunity to not just tour for free which is cool but also truly get to sit down with the professor with the research lab um, and figure out if it's a fit for me and that is not something I would be able to do if I just went and toured on my own so there's that and last but not least, I want to encourage you to start developing your scholarship list right now. <clears throat> As many of you know, I am an ambassador for our aerospace department, so I've had a lot of you all come to my tour, which is hilarious, but um, I give tours of the aerospace building. I'm essentially a rep for the school um, and like a student rep for the school. So when people want to come to her, I'll show them around the building, talk to them about scholarships, classes, that sort of thing. And through this, I've really, really found out how little people know about scholarships. Um, I am appalled that every time I get students asking me about financial aid and scholarships and all they really know about is the traditional college scholarships. So the ones that CU offers, the ones that Stanford offers. No, 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 no. Go look elsewhere. You are, I guarantee you, if you work at it, you are going to get more money from a company outside of the university than from the university itself. My, the largest portion of my full ride scholarship is from Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin has a great scholarship. Raytheon has a great scholarship. Coca-Cola has a great scholarship. Taco Bell has a scholarship. Um, lots of banks have scholarships. My boyfriend is also on a full ride and his full ride is from a bank, a local bank. Again, look outside the school, please, please, please. If you can start developing your scholarship list right now, put together, a little Excel spreadsheet or whatever of the scholarship you found, how much it's worth, a link to it, um, and they probably don't have due dates yet just because you would be looking about nine months in advance, um, but just start putting this together that way. Again, when you're stressed, you're not scrambling for scholarships. You already have a good list of 50 scholarships you want to apply for that you think you'd be a good candidate for. Um, yeah. Highly recommend you do that. And with that, also take note of if you can apply again as a first year student. My biggest scholarship, the one from Lockheed Martin, you can apply to as a senior in high school and as a first year in college. I applied as a senior in high school, didn't get it. I applied as a first year college student, got it the second time I applied. So like I said, I highly recommend you keep, keep note of which scholarships you can apply for again. And if you are a first year student in college, there is a chance you can try again um, and potentially get more scholarships, which is great. So moral of the story, do what you can now so you're less stressed later. Um, and I promise not only will you be less stressed, but it'll set you up for success from a financial scholarship standpoint, as well as just doing everything 
to a higher quality, I suppose. If you're less stressed and you're less busy, you're gonna be able to put out better work. So um, if you all have any questions, please let me know down below. I'd be happy to answer them. And like I said, I will have links to college essay guy as well as prep expert down below if you're interested in checking them out so um i hope you all have a great day thank you so much for watching and i will see you all next time peace out bye